our segment that we've started called Three Wise Men, where we get three experts of a particular sector to tell us how 2017 will pan out. And today under our lens is the pharma sector. We have three gentlemen, Arpit Vyas, the managing director of Dishman Pharma joins in, Surjit Pal of Prabhuda Sliradhar and Vishal Manchanda of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities are with us. Gentlemen, thank you uh, to all three of you for joining us on the show. Uh, Arpit, I want to start off with you. You know, in the last six months, uh, there is a lot of talk about pricing pressure uh, in the U.S. because of increasing competition and crackdown from the U.S. FDA as well. Um, what kind of price erosion in general should we expect for the sector, uh, say, over the next uh, 6 to 12 months? It really depends. For us, we are into cram segment, so for us, the price erosion uh, does not really affect us because uh, we are into new chemical entities which are new molecules, and uh, for that, it is a completely uh, customized uh, synthesis for our partners. And uh, for that, uh, you know, there is a, a price factor involved in all the processes that are uh, uh, researched and developed by us. And then post that, after the molecule goes commercial, whatever the price has been decided, it has been discussed between uh, us and the partners. But the price erosion that you talk about is going to be really affected with the, uh, with the generic segment where uh, uh, the lesser the competition, uh, the more the price is going to be asked for uh, in the U.S. market. Uh, right now, how does uh, U.S., uh, after Donald Trump uh, getting elected, is uh, going to be affecting the API market is still a question. But I don't think we should see much uh, price erosion because the pressure of uh, lower price is not there. People are going more towards quality. And hence, uh, US FDA is also wanting better quality products and, uh, to be, uh, uh, and regulations to be followed. And if that is happening, then uh, people should not uh, see a price erosion. Yes, of course, if you have a warning letter and you have issues, then the, if you want to hold on to your customers, you have to uh, show some kind of uh, compensation. Yeah, but uh, Arpit, uh uh, I agree you are in new chemical entities, but new drug approvals also have slowed down. I think if I remember right, uh, uh, Glenmark and Oro have got uh, uh, some approvals, but otherwise, in general, new drug approvals have slowed down. So will that be a, a cloud hanging over pharma companies in 2017? Again, uh, that the new drug approval that you talk about is uh, into a generic segment. Yes, into the end. You know, I agree. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So for us, it is a new chemical entity, which is a new molecule for a yeah. new therapy. And okay. we are into life yeah, no, you know, the reason why I'm posing this question to you is you are, in a sense, therefore a neutral observer. And yeah, therefore, yeah. you can you know comment that. whether this will be a problem for those who are looking for new drug approvals in the generic segments. I don't think there should be a problem as long as you are following the norms and uh, FDA has uh, you have complied with the FDA. Uh, there shouldn't be a problem with uh, getting new drug approvals. Okay. If you are not complying for some, uh, especially for quality reasons, then that could be a problem. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we don't see much uh, issue in uh, getting approvals from uh, the regulatory market. Okay. Okay, before we move on to the other gentlemen, just wanted to check with you, you know, progressively over the years, you've strengthened your presence in the cram segment. You've added, uh, you know, new clients every year, etc. What kind of growth do you see for your own company in the cram segment over the next one year? For us, uh, we have uh, learned from the past mistakes and, uh, you know, we have realized that uh, uh, anticipating a, a, a launch a revenue in the growth uh, of a new chem uh, of a new molecule is uh, not uh, fair because uh, a lot of aspects are dependent on it, uh, mm. especially to do with regulatory. So we uh, maintain a minimal uh, growth aspect of 10 to 12 percent a year, year on year. Mm. And if a molecule goes commercial and as and when volume increases, that will be a bonus. Okay, you uh, expect that uh, new chemical entities would be an area where more people will come in. Uh, uh, the, is, is there likely to be more competition? And on the other hand, are you likely to benefit as well because of others vacating the place for whatever problems, US FDA, etc.? I think we are in a medical field, so uh, having a competition in a medical field is not the right term, according to me. Okay. Because the more medicines available, uh, the better it is. Uh, but uh, to, for, to answer your earlier question of uh, uh, being in cramps, uh, getting more players in cramps, uh, what will happen is that if 
to be in crimes, you need to have a track record. We have okay. a track record of almost 20, 25 years mm -hmm. and uh, getting uh, the confidence of the customers where we are protecting their IP. And that is uh, the main criteria here. If you are able to showcase that and to showcase the ability of uh, passing uh, through USFP approvals, then uh, there will be more players uh, coming in. But that is a difficult task for uh, okay. many players. So established players, I think uh, it will be an ongoing activity and uh, maybe the, their, they, they will be preferred. Mm. For a new company to come into new chemical entity, unless they have something extraordinary uh, to prove uh, 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 capabilities, uh, new players coming in is seems a little difficult. Okay. okay. Well, we are also have two more participants into the discussion, so let's get them in. Sujit Pal joins in. Vishal Manchanda of Nirmal Bang is also with us. Uh, Vishal, morning. Uh, you know, the word US FDA regulations or observations ha has really spooked the market over the last many uh, days and months, but we know that it doesn't always mean a bad thing. Uh, what is your own expectation for uh, 2017? Do you see more pressure coming in, more crackdowns from the US FDA on the Indian pharma companies? I think uh, a large part of the pain is already there uh, in the stocks and I'm looking uh, to, as, as 2017 to be better than 2016 at least from a stock price performance point of view. Uh, so the US FDA pain is already there. Uh, companies have actually understood uh, that they need to raise their quality standards to a new level before they can uh, take up the technically complex generics. Uh, for the U.S. markets. So I think uh, next year we'll see the resolution of Dr. Reddy and Sun Pharma as the key triggers uh, for a re-rating in the pharma sector uh, to happen. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Surujit, uh, uh, you know, in terms of price corrections, uh, the uh, from the start of uh, uh, 2016 to the end of the year, uh, the tables were just running. You know, Sun ha was trading at 25 times, it's at 19 times. Lupin was trading at 25, it's at 19 times. Uh, well, Dr. Reddy is not much. Uh, Cipla also perhaps it's only, uh, you know, 24 to 21 times. Oro has seen a lot of fall. It was at 18 times, it's gone to 13 times. Uh, uh, Divis, uh, just in the last eight weeks, perhaps from 20 times to probably 15 times. Are these now attractively priced? From a strictly stock market perspective, uh, uh, what does 2017 hold for the pharma sector, especially for those that have shed valuations? Uh, see, when uh, pharma was on a you know bull run, you know even, even these guys were trading at around 25 plus time. Uh, that time people used to say, is that you see there are growth prospect and that's why you know we see such a kind of you know hefty valuations they deserve. So when prices come down, on the, on, the, on the other hand, we are not seeing any kind of positive aspect as far as generic business is concerned. The risk return matrix is very unfavorable for the sector and it is going to be more unfavorable, not only from uh, a regulatory perspective, from competitive perspective also, there are more and more consolidation is happening at a distributor's level, which is another big concern. So your buying power is almost gone. Uh, there are very small guys are also posing threat to the big guys or, or, or generic measures. Uh, say for example, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the small and medium guys who are late in the market, they don't have much of, you know, portfolio to show off, uh, to get the much of valuation. So I think those guys will be exploited by the big distributors over there for large part of the, uh, you know, generic business going forward as a CFO partner. So, so anyway, those guys are not getting much of market share. If they are getting those, those CMO business, for example, 20% margin, they will be very happy to supply and utilize their, 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 their things. So I think, again, those 60% of those large pharma stocks, I mean, the 40% on an average belongs to top five or top 10 products. But rest of the products, which contributes on 60% of the revenue in US, is, is which is currently six to ten percent of the price solution is severely under threat because these small and medium guys across the world still not you don't think they are cheap you don't think good times are uh, on the horizon for them i don't think they, the good times are on the horizon rather we could see after two years you know there will be hardly any kind of prospect of generic business it will be more of a nda nc ncc kind of product prospect 
Okay, well, uh, we have run out of time completely. So we'll thank all three gentlemen for joining us and